Okay, good morning, Commissioner Ed Rothstein. Thursday, November 10th, and we are ready for open session. Before open session, as always, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, as always, let's start with Priority Carol, and we have, I think, one proclamation after that. Um, Commissioner Boucher. Oh, thank you. Good morning, everyone out there. Uh, we're approaching the holiday season. I got some things that will come up before Swain brings them up. I want to state that the Carol Arts Center has a lot of festivities coming up for the holidays. They have Gallery of Gifts, Festival of Reefs. They have a Choi Brown Jazz Christmas. And I think I'm going to be taking my grandkids to the Jack Frost and a year after a Christmas showing. Plus, they also do It's a Wonderful Life. So if you're looking for things that are festive in Westminster to celebrate the holidays, please patronize Carroll Arts Center. Last week, I had the honor of talking to the heart of the Civil War Heritage Area. For those you don't know, that is Carroll, Frederick, and Washington County's team up and work on uh, public awareness of our historical Civil War sites and encouraging tourism. The impact of the heart of Civil War heritage area is realized by the combined effort of many who work together to preserve and share our historical, cultural, and natural resources. In doing so, we broaden people's perspectives on who and what counts in the Maryland story and recognize the contributions of Carroll, Frederick, and Washington counties to this nation and the world. The <coughs> historical area also contributes to the well-being of our communities with an annual economic contribution of $450.2 million, 6,376 jobs supported and sustained, and $60.3 million in local, state, and tax revenue. So I want to thank all those people who are involved. There's a, a photo of the people. It was a very wonderful gathering. I always joke around saying that all the people in history are a bunch of nerds, and ultimately nerds run the world. It's an honor to be part of that. We have uh, Jane Shule there, our, our farm director. She did a little video clip. Each county gave a clip of what is impacting their county with these resources. We received, I believe, almost $140,000 help with her, her assessing the quilt so we have, we have historical quilts and setting up the exhibit, and that ties in with their Born Quilt Trail. So I want to thank all those individuals. Mr. Swam, do I have anything else? I did a stream cleanup. Oh, this, boy, what a wonderful time that was. We were out in New Windsor this past Saturday. All these individuals got together, and we walked through the stream bottom at Park, and we gathered up a whole lot of garbage. And it, it's amazing how much stuff gets thrown out. There's a pile, there's tires. Uh, there's pallets, lots of plastic, and it's heartbreaking to see the amount of trash that gets thrown out in our, in our resources. So it's also heartwarming for individuals to come out. There on the left is New Windsor Councilman Kevin Cornick. Got to talk to him for a while. It was nice to see someone from the local government in New Windsor out there participating. There's uh, Byron Madigan down there with his hip waders. He's a real trooper. He walked a full stream bed through the park pulling out tires we had to get shovels and dig tires out and this is going to be an ongoing project i encourage as many people out there as possible when you see these clean uh, stream cleanups on the agenda somewhere go out and participate it'll put things in perspective and also bring your children give your children an awareness of what's out there and as the stream bed changes with floodwaters more <coughs> excuse me more and more trash and garbage will be exposed because years of pollution have settled into the ground and as the stream changes its path it exposes new debris it's like we've seen tires that have probably been buried for 40 years so this will be an ongoing process i hope people continue to participate and as i move on to a uh, new civic duty i hope the staff at the county contacts me and i will continue to participate in this process process and and help clean up and give public awareness i don't know if i have anything else there that'll do it and thank you very much commissioner frazier Oh, okay. <laughs> Here. Is it roll call? Here. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Uh, I was at the Westminster Senior Center, uh, Senior Sets, oh, I'll say it in a second. Westminster Senior Center Veterans Day program yesterday with uh, Commissioner Rothstein. It was, a, it was a very nice program. They had three uh, veterans speak, couple, some poems, some music, and so forth. And one gentleman, uh, one of the veterans, talked about uh, his time when he uh, during the Second World War. He was not in the Second World War, but he was a person living, a child, I guess, living in the neighborhood and talked about the impact they had on the neighborhood. And he talked about the, the shortage of steel and rubber and the drives that they had. And he also was talking about rationing. One thing what's really affected him, because you mentioned it three times, was the rationing of butter. So I guess he really liked butter because he mentioned I'm that several times. But there's, there's rationing butter. And, and it, was, it, was, it was very interesting to hear from his perspective. From the way he was talking, I guess he was like 9 or 10 at that time. So it was an interesting to go through. And he's also talked about the uh, air raid uh, wardens. When they have an air raid and they will go out at night to make sure you couldn't see any light coming out of the houses and stuff like that things that were happening back then were very it was very interesting it really was and um i will also say that tomorrow i'll be at the gerstel academy's veterans day program in the morning i believe commissioner weaver will be joining me there and expecting another another great program there as well and you might notice i'm sure you did on our high definition tv i have a wrestling tie on because <coughs> wrestling practice has started for the um for the, for the private schools started Monday. And I have to admit, after coaching for over 40-some years, I'm a little tired at the end of practice now. <laughs> when, I get, when I get home at night, I'm not up too long. <laughs> but I'll stop there. Thank you. <laughs> Don't feel alone. Uh, good morning. I don't know if I can follow that or not. Uh, tough. I know. It's pretty tough. <laughs> uh, long time coming, and... Uh, it's an honor for me to sit here today and say that we are hiring for fire and EMS department. Mm -hmm. uh, what a what a journey we've had um, to get to this point, and um, the the uh, the ad went up I think today or yesterday I believe. Oh. Yep. Yesterday. And you got that, Chris. I don't know if you got it or not, but anyway, uh, we're we're there. We go. Uh, and that. Um, when I first came into this job in, in 2014, I was uh, hesitant then to say that we would be where we are uh, at the end of eight years because it's been a, an, a long journey. Uh, but what a proud moment for everyone involved, including our volunteers, uh, those that have come and gone in, um, in fire and EMS, whether it be career volunteer here in the county, and we are here today uh, beginning the hiring. So. Uh, thankful for that and uh, want, just want to say congratulations to everyone that's worked hard. Uh, I remember the, the days in Annapolis when we were down there uh, trying to make this and meeting with everybody <coughs> down there and uh, so we're here and um, much success I'm sure as we will build the best combination department in the state. There's no doubt in my mind. Are you applying? <clears throat> so um, <laughs> 24 and 3 weaver i wasn't going to say it but since you chimed in today's today's count is 24 and 3. are you applying to the fire department uh we'll see <laughs> <clears throat> i can't answer that at this time oh, okay um there are several high schools that are beginning their um their musicals and plays as a matter of fact the francis scott key high school uh begins theirs this friday and saturday evening with the midsummer night stream I would encourage everyone to go out. Uh, what a talented group of kids over there. Uh, we'll be there on several of those nights because I have a granddaughter that's involved in the production. But uh, for those high schools that are involved and those high schools that are doing fall musicals, uh, go out and see them. But uh, again, <coughs> FSK <coughs> has theirs beginning it's this weekend and then next weekend. And then the only other thing I have is uh, got a little bit of an ominous forecast coming up so my public safety message for the day high winds and a lot of rain tomorrow let's so be careful out there uh, we're not out of this the uh, storm season yet apparently because Nicole has some mm -hmm. things she'd like to say as she goes up the coast that's it yep Commissioner Weaver uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Rusty and I had the honor yesterday of attending the uh, Business Advocates for Veterans uh, and Police Officers uh, at Post 31, 
and uh, Todd Mit- Todd and Karen Mitchell, as always, did an excellent job, and they were recognized, caught off guard actually yesterday for this uh, <clears throat> luncheon they hold every year, and they've done a great job, and it was a packed house. I do want to take just a minute uh, to recognize the people who they honored the police officer of the year recognition awards to sergeant jason kurtner of sykesville police department the uh, veteran friendly employer and organization of the year went to the kellard foundation mr greg kellard uh and uh our guest speaker was uh, oh i'm sorry before i get that veteran of the year uh <coughs> sergeant major uh major adrian uh, G- gamboa <coughs> and uh, marine corps <coughs> retired and our guest speaker, John Bolt, uh, he really um, talked about his experience in Vietnam and how he, through a, as a Marine, and uh, with the 3rd Battalion, 9th Marines, he uh, really had a lot of pictures and uh, what, what he went through as a young man, 18 years old, uh, into Vietnam. So, uh, and just, just to keep things in perspective, I think the average age for World War II was in the early 20s, 24, 5. The average age in Vietnam was 19. Big difference on that. And uh, it was really an honor to be there. And as as, uh, Commissioner uh, (coughs) on on the end over here said, Fraser, uh, (laughs) uh, we will be at Christelle in the morning. And I think we have a TV broadcast in the morning first thing, don't we? We do. Okay. Mr. Rothstein, you can pick up on that. So uh, first thing, we were given a, a new data regarding Maryland unemployment ranking. And Carol as expected is uh, leading the pack with 2.9 percent unemployment um, where the state average is 3.7 so congratulations to all those and we're going to uh, talk workforce development in a few minutes as well and recognize all the work they're doing but uh, just the the partnership with uh, our workforce development our economic development our um, tech center the schools the community college all working together gets us to that 2.9 percent so very proud of uh partnership when it leads to these type of results happy birthday to our marine corps it is a uh, 247th uh, birthday of our uh, marines um i attended the ag board meeting and the board of education uh meeting last night um both very productive uh the ag board will be discussing a little bit more later on this morning on um their continuing uh efforts to make the ag center the place to be in not just carroll county but the uh the region and the state and um just very very impressed with those uh engaged in the ag board uh, and participate in the ag board and very proud that uh you know, I get to uh, participate with them as well because they just do some incredible things uh, in our in our community, in our county. Board of Education, same uh, very collegial uh, meeting last night. Um, it only lasted two hours and forty minutes, so I got the uh, the lucky one, uh, <laughs> and I think um, uh, definitely worthwhile. And again, um, I encourage. Well, not encourage. I look forward to continuing the participation in these boards and commissions and councils as they just give us such a good understanding uh, to share across um, across you know the dais and how we can better <coughs> serve our community. Um, the Veterans Day luncheon yesterday was a really uh, wonderful opportunity it was a packed house mission barbecue as always does a great job so it's a great opportunity to uh have some mission barbecue it is uh free lunches for veterans i believe tomorrow for veterans day um at mission barbecue but they did cater yesterday and most important is uh the commissioner to my left uh commissioner dickie weaver received an award in recognition for his service uh just over the past eight years but also his service as a veteran in the community and uh, he was caught off guard not by me calling him dicky but by the award he was uh, presented and uh very proud of the work he's doing and we're able to bring up uh commissioner elect kenny kyler to help uh provide the award to uh commissioner weaver um 
I will be attending this afternoon, uh, and this will be going quickly because I'll be attending this afternoon uh, over at Vehicles for Change um, event where they are giving out vehicles for veterans that are still in need. Uh, so I'll be sharing a few words, but also handing keys off to uh, some veteran uh, families uh, with vehicles. And that's just, it's a, it's a great program. Um, so I'll be going from here to there. Um, lastly, like Commissioner uh, Frazier, you shared yesterday morning, I thought was a great event for our seniors. And um, there'll be senior center events uh, across the county, recognizing our veterans. Um, I believe some today, tomorrow, and early next week um, across uh, the different senior centers. And the gentleman that shared his uh, memories of uh, World War II, very um, you know, close to me as well because my dad, this is the first Veterans Day where my dad is not with us. He passed a few months ago on July 4th. And he was a veteran of the Korean War, but he was also a child during World War II. And his mom, my grandmother, was an air warden in the community. And you got to picture this five foot nothing, kind of stocky woman coming out of Russia who spoke Yiddish and some English maybe, telling these people to close their blinds and I see lights and stuff like that. And she, the power of the whistle was, was her thing. She would have this hat on. So just a, a visualization of this, you know, this woman was pretty pretty special but um yeah it was a it was a tough time then and he got through it it's a tough time you know as we continue to move forward and we're going to get through it so um i think now let's uh, go right into the proclamation and commissioner i just we did have a world war ii veteran there we did. yesterday that incredible gentleman in uniform he was in uniform he uh um, enlisted in 1941, and he was a submariner. <laughs> yeah. So pretty impressive. The submarines didn't leak, and he was still with us. Uh, yeah, very impressive uh, yeah. gentleman. So. Is he possibly sort of on the tallish side and very, th very thin? Yes. I, I saw he, he wore his uniform to the veterans' event in May. I'm pretty sure it's probably oh, the same yeah. gentleman. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Very, I mean, he didn't seem to have any mobility issues, any problem. He was, he no, he was walking with a stick, but that's it. And, uh, yeah, very impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Very so. impressive. Okay, let's uh, go with the <coughs> proclamation for National Apprenticeship Week. And, okay. Heather, if you want to come up to the chair. Oh, she want to read this? Yeah, please. No, her, I mean. No, you have I'm kidding. <laughs> National Apprenticeship Week, November 14th to November 20th. <clears throat> National Apprenticeship Week is celebrating its eighth anniversary of raising awareness of the vital role of registered apprenticeships <clears throat> provided in creating opportunities by allowing apprentice apprentices to earn while they learn and preparing a pathway to well-paying careers in Carroll County and across the nation. Registered apprenticeship programs enable employees to develop and train their future workforce while offering career seekers affordable paths to, to secure high paying jobs. And Carroll County recognizes the role of registered apprenticeships in expanding opportunities in our workforce that are inclusive of individuals who have been historically underserved, marginalized and adversely affected by persistent poverty and, and, and inequality, thus providing the path for all qualified individuals, <coughs> including women, youth, people of color, rural communities, justice-involved individuals, and individuals with disabilities to become apprentice, apprentices and contribute to America's industries. Carroll County recognizes that reg registered apprenticeship, a proven and industrial-driven training model provides a critical talent pipeline that can't they can, sorry, they can train and build up our workforce to address our nation's pressing issues such as responding to climate change, modernizing our cybersecurity response and addressing public health issues and rebuilding our, our country's infrastructure. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim November 14th, 2022 through November 20th, 2022 as National Apprenticeship Week and it's signed by all of the uh, board of Commissioners and thank you and uh, you know as Heather we've talked about partnership with Bill you being here from the school system with the Tex uh, Center this is just a great 
you know, demonstration of that partnership. So appreciate, Bill, you taking time also being here. But any comments from us before you guys want to go? I do want to make uh, one comment that this is vitally important. We need people that know how to fix things. We need people for, for, we need mechanics, we need HVAC, we need plumbers, we need electricians, we need carpenters. All that, those skills are vitally needed. And I have to say, and I was a teacher for 40 years, not everyone is cut out for college. This is a great program to go through, to learn skills. It's a, most, I say most, all these jobs I'm thinking are, are high paying jobs. It's something to look into if, you, if you're anyone that is saying, you know, school's okay, but it's not my thing. Look for an apprenticeship program. Look for something you like to do with your hands. You get a really good feeling when you actually fix or, or build something of your own. You really do. It's something I think our, the youth of our country really needs to start looking into again as it's vitally, vitally needed. I will say bravo to Commissioner Frazier's words. I think he nailed it. Just the other week, we went to a CDL graduation ceremony. And we heard directly from someone express how these programs have touched his life and increased the quality of life for his family. You know, I remember when I first declared my candidacy four years ago, two of the first people I emailed was Dr. Eckel and Dr. Ball. And I did that because I knew that the path to my success in life came from a vocational center coupled with the community college. And that's a path so many individuals out there can take. You go to community college and become a welder or an auto mechanic, <laughs> it doesn't stop there. Some of those individuals progress on to become small business owners. They learn to become engineers, they become business managers. There's so many opportunities that are out there for people to go into the trades and find themselves. And sometimes individuals are lost in the academic aspect of high school. It, they want to touch something, they want to feel something, they want to see a sense of satisfaction at the end of the day that they've made something. Even if it's being a plumber and fixing someone's toilet, these are things that are vitally important. So often we hear that the individuals in the trades are not that intelligent, which I find quite ironic when someone who has a higher education can't change your tire or something. Intelligence is all a matter of perspective of your need and at the moment. So I uh, applaud Ms. Powell and Dr. Eckel. You guys have been very good to me, and I've enjoyed the last four years working with you. The CDL program, the welder program, you have impacted people's lives. I'm sure it's very satisfying for you to accomplish what you do and run into these individuals in the future and, and then express to you directly how you've impacted their life, especially with the students. So I applaud you and what you do, and I'm sure it's a very satisfying career that you have. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Commissioners, for your support and your proclamation. Um, apprenticeship is our way forward. We talked about the low unemployment rate in the county. So we are looking at our emerging workforce, and that is the youth. And as you said, I, I won't repeat everything, but um, college is not for everybody. There's so many alternatives. And the alternative to work and learn um, is very promising for so many people, and not only our youth, but all our citizens. And just wanted to make the community very aware of what's going on with apprenticeship in the county. Um, we have several partners sitting at the table. The Workforce Development um, Board has put together an apprenticeship committee and it, it's key partners and we're leveraging those partnerships to make sure there's no wrong door to apprenticeship and to opportunities for job seekers in the county. Um, Bill is with me today. Um, I was hoping he would talk a little bit about youth apprenticeship which is, sure. is rising and um, the work that we're going to be doing through um, Carroll County Workforce Development in the school system. Sure, and youth apprenticeship is, is um, something that we have started engaging in. It's actually a requirement under the new blueprint, uh, but it's a good idea in any <laughs> case. And so um, what we're looking at is, you know, we have programs at the tech center, at the high schools for students to learn some of these skills, but we're never gonna have programs in everything and for every student. And so if we can make these connections with our local industry partners and get students directly involved through a youth apprenticeship, you know, then we can find the career path that works for that student, help fill a role with local business, help the community. So it, it's a win all the way around. And um, you know, we've had registered apprenticeships, but you have to be 18, you have to be out of school. And a lot of students are still trying to find their path. And so if we can get them started while they're in school, try some things out, find that you know specialty where they feel like they can really provide value, that they feel uh, 
that is a nice fit for them, provide benefit to the company, it's a nice path forward. So we're very proud to be working with Workforce Development and Heather and uh, making that connection, trying to make it seamless for students as they leave school uh, to continue in the workforce and you know, find that career. Exactly. Yeah, Commissioner Weaver? You know, years ago I had the opportunity to work with a man of great vision as part of goals 2000 for the school system would happen to be your father and it just carries through that vision and what it you sounded just like him what you were talking about <laughs> so i'm glad to see you have that same focus and heather i know what you're doing with uh uh with the development program over here uh youth development so this is all uh great things we're doing and it's needed uh I remember going to a conference in Minnesota at that time. We were talking to all the major employers across the country, just what they're asking for. And darn if didn't come home and your father and started putting it together, you stepped in, have continued to put that together, and we have a great program in Carroll County. And every employer out here knows about it. Uh, that In the tech center and the uh, development programs we have, economic development. So. This is uh, fantastic. Thank you. Now, just uh, lastly, um, a I believe a good friend and uh, strong professional, um, former Secretary of Commerce Kelly Schultz, who was also Secretary of Labor. She started the apprenticeship program when she was in Secretary, uh, Secretary of Labor. Um, and she ran the Governor's Workforce Development Board and asked me to participate, which I still do. Just like the county's workforce development is not subordinate to the governor's workforce development it's all about partnerships working together and that's that's key is to, you know this attitude of subordination doesn't make sense we don't go anywhere it's all about partnerships and um you know you've shown that with uh our governor's workforce development board and the work that you're doing in establishing it uh splitting from howard county was a really good idea uh to get us to stand up on our own and um you know i just really look forward to participating in uh in the future efforts um you know because we're going to continue to make a difference so thank you thank you and and there is excitement at the table mm -hmm. the partnership i i don't think we've seen this level of of cooperation for quite a while between so many different agencies and um community partners so yeah. it's exciting what we can do and and just the thought that you know to put out to other businesses it's not always registered apprenticeship it can be we can right. create apprenticeships for pretty much all industry right. and and that's really what we're looking to do in Carroll County we don't have a lot of large businesses that are used to registered apprenticeships because that's a very um, prescribed process but yet it, we can incorporate other things into it so that's good. okay we can certainly make opportunities with any kind of business that would like to participate mm -hmm. yeah you know we can it's not just manufacturing and construction you know, right if, if somebody wants to work with us we'll find a way yep sounds good Thank you. So, uh, can I give a real quick plug to a veterans event we have going on at 10 30 over at workforce development absolutely. today um, we are partnering with the Department of Labor and the Tech Council and at 10.30, there's a presentation. It's a veterans job club. So we have at least 25 veterans registered. We have Great. state representatives from the apprenticeship mm -hmm. program, um, the reentry program, but it's really focused on using technology in job seeking. And um, that's where the tech council comes in. They've been delivering um, technology computers to a lot of veterans locally. So we're excited that that's happening today. We, we've come a long ways in taking care of our you know, military community as they take the uniform off and go into civilian clothes, um, like this program you're talking about. So, I really appreciate you sharing that. Sure, thank you. Thanks. Want we'll to get a picture and start business? <coughs> Do you want me to take more for you? That's all you got your phone out. No, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks.
Okay, uh, Linda, why don't you come on up? Let's talk about text amendment 2158.095 to establish the historic preservation commission under the planning and zoning commission. I'm working on it. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. So today I have with me um, Edwin Gregg, who is the Historic Preservation Commission Chair, and Hannah yeah. Weber, who is our staff liaison to the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, <clears throat> so the reason we're before you, and, and uh, as a text amendment, is because the Historic Preservation Commission is actually established under our zoning code, so that Chapter 158 that you all hear so much about. <laughs> Um, and in order to make any amendments to that, it has to be referred to the Planning Commission for their review, recommendation, and eventual referral back to the Board of County Commissioners. Um, the reason we want to come before you to do this is because, as you know, boards and commissions are hard to staff um, and, and hard, I'm sorry, hard to bring um, commission members on board, especially when that's completely voluntary. There's no stipend for the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, over the last several years, they have continued to have diminishing um, commission membership. So out of, a, I believe, a seven commission, mm -hmm. um, they're down to three commission members. And with that, we thought it might be a good opportunity to explore the possibility of having instead the Planning Commission sit in place of the Historic Preservation Commission when um, there are exterior renovations to be had in historic union town i'm going to have hannah uh, just briefly briefly present to you um, about her hpc and what this would mean and then um mr greg is here to also talk with you and answer any questions about why we should be moving forward with this we have met separately with um, mr greg and mr Walther, who's the chair of the planning commission and then we've met together to make sure that this isn't coming out of nowhere, that everyone's been involved in the discussions. So I just wanted to make you aware that the um, Planning Commission is, uh, supports this, as well as the HPC. So with that, I'm going to have Hannah um, just give you a really brief presentation about what our Historic Preservation Commission is and what area it covers in the county. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Linda said, we are here to discuss the transition of the Historic Preservation Commission, or the HPC. But before we get into the transition, I wanted to go over what the HPC does, their purpose, and things like that. Um, so the purpose of the HPC is to foster and safeguard the heritage of the county by preserving sites, structures, and districts of historic significance inside the Historic District Overlay, or the HDO. The commission decides whether to grant requests for exterior changes to a property inside the HDO after a hearing on the matter. And as Linda said, the HPC rules and regulations are in Chapter 158 of the County Zoning Code, and it's listed under the HDO chapter. So in the county, the actual only area that the HDO covers is the Historic District of Uniontown. So this means any resident that is inside this historic district overlay boundary um, must apply for a work permit with the HPC and um, for work to be done on their exterior property. Um, the HDO is approximately 156 acres and includes approximately 100 properties. And the historic district of Uniontown is listed on the National and County Historic Register. So getting into the transition, as Linda said, we currently have three active members, and it's been a struggle to keep and retain new members and keep the HPC active and viable to serve the residents inside Uniontown. So some benefits of transitioning the HPC to the Planning Commission is the Planning Commission has more than double the members um, on their commission, so this would prevent the likelihood of not having enough HPC members for a hearing. Um, the Planning Commission has more of a public following, which could prove beneficial and public awareness of the HPC, their role, and the importance of historic um, preservation. And then more public awareness of the HPC could lead to a possible expansion of the HDO um, district to similar historic districts like Uniontown is. So next step, uh, we are here for your referral of the chapter to uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission for their recommendation back to you all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ms. Weber, thanks for the presentation. I think this plays in well with the heart of the Civil War heritage area because Union troops had staged in Uniontown prior to being moved into the Battle of Gettysburg. And uh, Chair Greg, it was nice meeting you at the event the other night. And <clears throat> this is vitally important for us 
and it brings in tourism to preserve Uniontown. Uniontown's a very unique place. And one night I was watching C-SPAN History Channel, and a professor was on there talking about the Battle of Gettysburg, and he mentioned Uniontown, Carroll County. This is a national broadcast, and he was encouraging people from all over the nation to come to Uniontown, Maryland. I was so honored that I'm part of this county, and we're nationally recognized for that little town. He's bragging about when you go to this town, it's like going back in time, and that's precisely what it is. So this is vitally important, and I applaud the decision that you're making here that in order to preserve this board that you move it into this function. So thank you very much for all you do. Okay, any comments, anybody for a motion? Nope. I make the motion to the board. I'm sorry. No, go, ahead, go ahead. I'll just, I'm going to make a couple comments, but make the motion first. I make the motion to the Board of County Commissioners forward to propose tax amendment to the Planning Zoning Commission for their review and recommendation. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Further discussion? I think it's a good move. Uh, Mr. Gregg, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you you guys discuss this and, and are in on this. It, it, it has been a challenge. Uh, Union Town's in my district, and uh, over the last eight years, there have been some challenges over there, as most of you know. So um, my only hope is that and i think you addressed it with that one bullet point you had on the one slide that it just is not uniontown we've got a lot of other historical areas in the county as a matter of fact there was a schoolhouse that i got involved with up on bark hill that needed some assistance and when we tried to get that assistance we really didn't have um enough to 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 help them so hopefully this will will, will help too and it's it's not just about uniontown it's about all of the historic areas in this county, and there's quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that they come up with a, with a good method if it's under uh, planning too, because I've heard from some of the folks in Uniontown when people buy something over there or own a home that are limited in what they can do, which is a little bit of a challenge. And I don't know that they know that when they go into it. So I think that'll help with this too. So. While I value that historical uh, part of it, I also value the fact that I think this will be an advantage moving forward mm -hmm. for not just that little burg, mm -hmm. but everything else around. And I, I hope that's part of it too. It, it is part of our plan. We are currently working on a rural villages plan. We have 36 rural villages in Carroll County that are state recognized, um, which lends itself to an opportunity for funding for um, different, um, you know renovations and things like that so if we can couple that with those district those those rural villages wanting to become part of um, the historic district overlay and that's one thing that's interesting here this was not thrust upon the Uniontown community when this was established they actually came to the county and said we want this to be a historic district they have buy-in from their community and that would be the same approach that we would take um, with the expansion of any additional historic district overlay districts good yeah yeah that's good that sounds great. It's a subset of, you know, the end state where you want to go with all those worlds. That's fantastic. That's good. That's good to hear. Okay. Yeah, that grant thing is, is really important, yeah. too, because we're, we, we have rapidly lost a lot of historic mm -hmm. structures mm -hmm. in this county. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pleasant Valley is a perfect example. That was a thriving uh, village, and everything that was associated with the business part of it is gone mm -hmm. I mean just gone so hopefully this will help slow what little bit we have left and that's what we're hoping to do is just strengthen our historic preservation resources right. um, to expand opportunities and this is just the first step of doing that yeah good okay okay fantastic any further discussion seen here none all in favor aye, aye. aye. thank you uh, Chris do we have anybody on the phone thank you so much thank, thank you very you. welcome no, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, from our esteemed public attorney, <laughs> proposed amendments to the county's ethics ordinance. Good morning. I know it seems like we've been talking about this for a long time, but we uh, have. each October <laughs> I'm supposed to certify to the State Ethics Commission that our ethics ordinance uh, is in full compliance with the, the State Ethics Ordinance. And in order to do that, we need to amend our current ordinance to reflect some 
state law changes that were made in, in uh, 2021. See, I dragged it out as long as I could, 2021. <laughs> uh, those changes were uh, to the state law were made in response to some nefarious uh, activities associated with the uh, a previous uh, public official in a, in a large city of Maryland involving uh, coloring books or something like that. Uh, but anyhow. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. The uh, state amended their uh, state law to, to cover such situations explicitly, <laughs> and as such, we are required to amend our state law uh, to, accordingly. Again, the amendments uh, create a definition of quasi-governmental entity, and it, they specifically include the uh, University of Maryland medical system. Uh, there's a MAKO and MML uh, net, which is, again, I, I, someday someone should give us an explanation as to why that's in there. You have to treat any gifts you receive from them the same as you would from any other lobbying groups for the purpose of reporting. It's, it prohibits specifically disclosure of confidential information fr by former officials or employees. That was always implicit. This is explicit. So once you leave office or an employee leaves office, they're now explicitly prohibited from disclosing confidential information. And the ethics ordinance would apply to that. There was question uh, uh, prior to that, say, I'm out of office. I don't care about your ethics ordinance. Well, this, well, this now specifically throws the net over an individual who uh, provides confidential information acquired during their um, office or employment uh, to another person for their, their gain after they leave. It prohibits retaliation uh, against individuals who report ethics violations. It prohibits the disclosure of uh, certain information in financial disclosure forms. Currently, if I want to see your financial disclosure form, I, I can go see it. This allows the, or requires the local ethics commission to uh, re refrain from disclosing certain financial information. Uh, it requ requires disclosure of gifts from MAKO or MML in your financial disclosure form uh, uh, in excess of $20 or, more, or gifts totaling $100 or more. That's, again, treating them the same as any other lobbying group. Requires you disclose any relationships with the uh, University of Maryland medical system, any local governments or any uh, quasi-local governments, and expands the types of interests you have in businesses uh, that need to be required on your financial disclosure form. Again, this is, these are changes that we're required to make to our local ordinance because of the uh, amendments that were made to the state law in 2021. I haven't gotten any public comment or, or uh, emails re regarding this either. Nobody wants to publish a coloring book or anything? <laughs> I move that the Board of County Commissioners adopt Chapter 34 Ethics Ordinance Amendments. Second. Okay, I have a <clears throat> motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. You say yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. Land resource management. Carroll County Water Resources Element Update. <clears throat> Morning. 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 The Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Department of Land and Resource Management received proposals for the Carroll County Water Resource Element Update. An evaluation committee was formed to conduct a technical and financial review of the proposals submitted. The committee evaluated all proposals based on criteria detailed in the proposal. The highest ranked firm for this project is Hazen and Sawyer in the amount of $262,504.89. This amount is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. I can give you a little bit of background on that too. So um, th the water resources element is one of the state required comprehensive annual comprehensive plan elements that we need to complete. It was first adopted in 2010 along with all of our municipalities and it's um, under state law these plans have to be updated every 10 years but the state just came out with um, guidance on how it needs to be updated at this point so we have budgeted for this and we are proceeding with hiring the consultant to do all of the technical background information that we need in order to incorporate what's required under the guidance and um, into the plan element and then update it accordingly. 
the um, the bid process. Uh, I mean, was it close? Was it? I mean, we initially, um, Commissioner, we initially um, solicited for a statement of qualifications. Right. Um, and from there, to shortlist uh, three, uh, two vendors. I'm sorry. Right. Um, the only two vendors we received in the statement of qualification um, were Hazen and Sawyer and um, the other Barton and um, mm -hmm. Lotus here. So then from, we took those two and then submitted um, to them an RFP in which they respond. Both of them submitted their technical and financial reviews and um, from there they were evaluated. But they were the only two that right. we received proposals from. <clears throat> you know, I think um, what, what may be helpful is seeing the um, the tool you use in comparison you know it's typically a block chart you know where you put in ones and twos and threes and fours and prioritizing you know it's a it's a per chart so where you're weighting the the strengths of how you're doing the evaluation um, not to go through it necessarily you know during the presentation but to making it available for us to see it, especially as we're going to be transitioning. So um, I think that's going to be important. Uh, and it doesn't take away any trust or any understanding of the professionalism that you have in doing this, but it's also an opportunity for, um, you know, folks to see it, mm -hmm. you know, from, from the die. So just let's consider that moving forward. Um, you know, again, key is this is not new. This is in the adopted budget, you know, and again, it's not new money, you know, that all of a sudden we're spending because it's a large sum when you're talking six figures. And I want to make it very clear continuously that the budget is set and this is now, you know, executing a budget that we established. So, okay, I, I appreciate Just think through that you know chris and yeah, um absolutely. i think it's a great idea yeah well i appreciate that did you hear that commissioner <laughs> fraser it's great <laughs> so okay okay um i'll move the board of commissioners award the contract for cc water res resources element update to hazen sawyer in the amount of two hundred sixty two thousand five hundred four dollars and eighty nine cents second i got a motion in a couple of seconds any further discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. Okay, let's talk about. Thank you. Approval of change orders for the construction of the Locust Wetland Stormwater Management Facility. <laughs> Commissioners, we're here today to ask your approval to increase the contract to Kibler Construction for the Locust Wetland. Stormwater Management Facility in the amount of one hundred one thousand dollars, one hundred one thousand seven hundred forty dollars and nineteen cents. This project has encountered numerous sinkholes throughout the course of construction, therefore generating additional change orders in order to proceed with the project. The amount is within the adopted budget. No additional funds will be necessary. So, uh, commissioners, we were here before you, uh, I guess, uh, a couple of months ago, and we had encountered some sinkholes that we had to repair. Um, in continuing the construction, uh, we, we've encountered additional sinkholes, a total of 20 sinkholes we've encountered out at, uh, at the Locust Wetland Project while we've been constructing it. Uh, in order to repair the sinkholes, uh, you know, the additional uh, money was necessary to repair the sinkholes that we encountered. We also um, added some uh, structural things in where uh, the, we changed the type of the pipe to ensure that it's watertight because we don't want uh, any chance of water leaking out of the pipe that would would uh, exacerbate sinkhole activity in the area um, and some uh, structural concrete under uh, pipe in the road to in ensure uh, that we don't have problems in in, in the roadbed that uh, where, where these uh, storm pipes or stormwater pipes are installed and a liner in one of the uh, four bays to uh, where, where we encountered a sinkhole to, to, to keep that water from infiltrating down there as well um, most almost all the costs that we're we're asking for uh, are related to sinkhole repairs there is one additional item that i wanted to mention is uh when we originally designed this project we were um we we knew we were gonna um 
excavate in George Street to put uh, storm drains in. Um, the uh, installing the storm drains would have essentially took up most of the width of George Street. We uh, we wanted to essentially to make the project look good. We wanted to repave the width of George Street, and, and that was all included in the original contract price. However, when we went out there and started digging, we found out that what we have is not a road that was built to uh, to any type of standard, but essentially it was an old um, tar and chip road that was overlaid with a with a bit of asphalt. So in order to fix that and, and, and bring the road up to uh, to a standard, uh, there's additional costs to have um, the uh, road regraded and, and uh, have subgrade installed, and, and that's uh, a cost of uh, $10,959 <coughs> approximately. So uh, the, the majority of the change orders are related to the sinkholes, but there is that one additional change order that would, uh, that would fix the road properly in the area where we've been working. And ultimately, I think what we're, you know, you know the, the outcome of this project will be a, uh, will be a, a good stormwater facility for, for the town of Union Bridge that uh, captures a, a large majority of, well, a large portion of the drainage area in the, uh, in the town. And it's, it's something that they're not going to have to worry about having uh, undermined because of the uh, care that we've taken and ensuring that, uh, that we've done what we can to uh, mitigate the problems with the geology out there. Well, Mr. Singer, I appreciate all your work on this. From, st from day one, you took me out there and seen the site before ground was broke. You took me out there and showed me the progress, and I went there and seen those sinkholes. They're quite scary. I must admit, when we were around that sinkhole, I kept my distance because it's a scary thought that the soil can cave in and you'd all be down in the mud and potentially disappear because here are horror stories in Florida it happens. So uh, I know it's a great challenge for the contractor to be out there. And I very much appreciate the direct involvement you kept with the town of Union Bridge, keeping them informed. This is a wonderful addition to the community out there, and I applaud everything you all have done. And with that, I move that the Board of Commissioners award the contract for Locust Wetland Stormwater Management Facility to Kilber Construction Company, Inc., in the amount of $101,740.19. Second. Okay, I have a motion, I have a second. Is there any discussion on this? No, it's a change order. Usually you guys are all over change orders. Getting tired of change orders, I know. And today there's no comment. Interesting. I'm waiting for you to hear what you have to say. No, I didn't argue the other ones when, when <laughs> okay. they came up. So. Okay, well, I'll argue this one. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to hear what's, what's I mean, it's just, you know, I'm getting, it's I'm getting tired of happy. it. You, you, I, you no. guys get into big debate. We well, had a couple up with Charles Carroll, and it was like, bloop, bloop, you know. I'm not sure which guys. You talking about me? Well, a couple, yeah, a couple yeah, of you were, okay. were debating about yeah. why change orders well, are so not, bad. It's so, not necessarily guys, and okay, well, it's wasn't me, but <laughs> I do get frustrated, and you know this, <clears throat> and Chris, I know you know this, and so is Brian and our our staff. I do get frustrated with change orders. Um, you know, sometimes the environment changes, which causes a change order to develop, but when we find that there's not enough forward thinking established in a project and a change order is then needed, that's bothersome. And we're going to deal with that in a little bit, I believe, on another project. Um, and it's regardless if it's a dollar or if it's $100,000, it's our taxpayers' money. And we need to guard our taxpayers' money the way, you know, it's, it's, it's meant to be. Um, so I agree, and I've been this way for decades, you know, when I've dealt with uh, projects. And it just so happens this is in another, you know, job I have. But, yeah, I get very frustrated when I hear change orders. Now, I mean, if you look at my book, it's circling the numbers. I'm like, wait a second. Here's the original forecast. Here's the next forecast. Here's the third. It's like, okay, let's get this done right. Um, and I know you don't like that. Well, let's get it done right because it was wrong before. Well, it was wrong before. And why was it wrong? Could it have been forecasted differently or did the environment change it? Um, so it's not just about visiting sinkholes, you know, and worrying about that. It's about understanding do we have the right people in the right place to make the job done uh, in the right manner. And you know, sometimes the lowest bidder is not the right answer. 
uh, to save a few dollars because it costs us longer in the end. Um, I don't know, but you know how I feel about it. I mean, but with that said, it has to be done, yeah. and we're stuck. So, so those are my comments. <laughs> I'm happy now. I heard it. So okay. you know, I just didn't want it to go. I mean, change orders are they're, they're a challenge. I just for, can't do the. Yeah, they're, they're, it's it's a challenge for all of us, and yeah. unforeseen circumstances come up all the time. I get it, but. I agree with Commissioner Rothstein. Uh, I don't know who initially bid on this, but you know sometimes maybe a stronger look instead of just low bid mm -hmm. is something that we should really be engaged in. And forget about the rhetoric that's associated with well, you know these guys are spending whatever uh, and didn't take low, you know, not taking a low bid. Well, this is the perfect example as to why maybe we need to take a little bit of a stronger look in some cases and this is no disrespect to staff but in some cases to not just the low bid what other things are provided as a result of the bids that are a little bit higher and i love the way that we do um you know with that last you were talking about coming up with that that Thank schematic you. or whatever it is as to yeah. how we yeah. got to where we got <clears throat> yeah. maybe that would be helpful in yeah. in the future for these for these bids and it's not you know, this, second guessing staff right no it's not and I, I want to make sure I'll say again right. it's no disrespect to staff right. but you know sometimes these these contractors come in and man it looks good on paper but you might miss something with the next bidder that said well we were gonna do that and it was part of our bid so it just you know we I, can that's all just we could look into a different procurement method and then such as the one we used for the water resource element update, which is an RFP, where it's just right. based on qualifications. Mm -hmm. right. Once they're technically reviewed, then you receive the financials and you rate the financials. Right. So we could look into a, a different procurement method, which would be the, the RFP process versus the bidding process where you're strictly on low bid. We right. Yeah, that might be that might be good moving forward, Carrie, with the with eliminating some of these yeah. uh, change orders. But, but if I really could, commissioners, I, I just with this contractor, it's what what we what we've encountered here is is not the really the contractor's fault. It's it's uh, it's a matter of geology, and I understand if things get missed on plans or or you're getting charged for things that really ought to be part of the job. But there's no way that the contractor could have known that we were going to encounter 20 sinkholes. That means they had to haul in material to fix those sinkholes and materials to. Um, to upgrade the uh, the infrastructure that's that's that the that, that's going over top of where where this uh, geology is that we did borings in advance and and we we really uh, we didn't expect to encounter this on this site and um, I, I don't know how you uh, this this is one of those things that you know when you talk about an act of God this is truly one that uh, I think we would have had a hard time forecasting uh, that we would have mm -hmm. run into I. I very pleased with the contractor. They've they've uh, been very responsive to dealing with these. We've had to have uh, our geologists go out there and direct them into what needed to be done because with a sinkhole, and, and I, I don't know if you guys have seen these sinkhole repairs. I know mm -hmm. Commissioner Boucher has seen, has seen what's going on out there, but you have to excavate mm -hmm. down to the throat of the sinkhole to fix it right, or otherwise what we'd have is the possibility of a, a truck disappearing or a car disappearing into a sinkhole in the middle of the road. And, um, you know, I understand. I don't like having to come before you and explain why, why we need a change order. But this isn't something that was due to a, a lack of planning, in my opinion. It's because of uh, things that we couldn't see in the ground that, that are part of the geology out there. Anytime we do a project out in, in Union Bridge, New Windsor area, out in, out in the Wakefield Marble, there's, there's a possibility you're going to run into unknown geological conditions. And, and regardless of right. how many borings you do, these pinnacles go up and down it's it's um impossible so, to know yeah, about me, all of them i i appreciate it, but actually the conversation we're having here is not directed at this specific okay. issue yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not a, yeah, it's, it's it's procedural it's um much more of a, a holistic understanding of the kind of it's it's not this specific and Regarding sinkholes, I'm very familiar with sinkholes, and there's some been some nasty ones. Glory Days had a pretty nasty one a year or two ago. Um, private property, but still, it would, I mean, it could have 
put the whole town in that damn hole. I just Excuse felt like language. I needed to take up for my <clears throat> no. contractor. Because no, no, no. You, you, job you, you, don't, you don't need to. <laughs> you, you don't need to. And it's not, again, it's not questioning uh, your skills and the staff skills. And it's not questioning this specific contractor's skill set or um, willingness. Um, no, w- we're talking about a much more procedural and holistic understanding of how we're getting from here to there and when change orders are necessary you know it's hey the environment caused this to happen unforeseen x you know um because you can get nickel and dimed and we don't want to get through that but i appreciate your comments and uh sticking up for your contractor uh you know i really do (laughs) <laughs> but that's not where we were going with this. Um, so, yeah. Where's the accountability in this? I know things are going to happen. And like sure. this one in that area, yeah, sinkhole is going to happen. But who has the accountability to make sure these change orders are not coming back to us? Is it the engineering firm? Is it wh- where, where is it falling apart? Well, I don't think it's falling apart. I, I think the yeah. I mean, are, are, who's missing something in this is what I'm asking. I think it, you have to take it a case by case basis. Yeah. So this, in this, right. this is not a good time to have this conversation because it seems like it's it is related, even though I know you've said, but because this could not have been foreseen. But it, you know, building construction, for example, is a better example of yeah. Where that's more where I was. I, yeah. I, I get the right. sinkhole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, although I will say, if you're going to do anything in Union Bridge and New Windsor, <laughs> you said it, you're probably going to hit a sinkhole. Mm-hmm. I mean, duh geologically yeah challenged. so yeah, so this one's going to move forward but the conversation yeah. we are having yeah. yeah yes it could be for more of an open admin type of conversation yeah. right. but and, and yeah it, it opened up because right. we talked change order and, and, and those and, two words and this is a big one and they've yeah. been here before right. for the same yeah. kind of thing and commissioner Wentz was... started it so yeah, yeah i started it so well. just but food for thought mm. for the future that's all yeah, yeah you know? there, exactly. but we can start, definitely look at our yep. either our procurement process yeah. or you know our our bidding process or um you know just internal you know reviews to ensure that we minimize those as much as possible so it the the bottom line with me is low bid is not always the best bid. Mm-hmm. That's all that I want to say. Right. Yeah. And in this case, you know, the one thing that we've thought about, if we have a, if we have some of these, we, we do have another project that's uh, we're looking at in the future in the New Windsor area. We, we, what we probably do is get them to bid a contingency fee for certain time and materials for repairing sinkholes, and that way, you know, up front, this is if we encounter sinkholes, this is what it's going to cost us in materials and time, uh, based on. You don't you don't know how big the sinkhole is going to be necessarily, right. but uh, we could have a time and materials type of contingency bit yeah. into the contract so that yeah. you guys could approve it up front and we don't have to come back to you with a change order. Yeah, and that that's that's good too. It's always mm-hmm. it's always good to say, hey, we had a pro we had project Y, and we've got one hundred and ten thousand dollars left over. And then only yeah. yeah. And now exactly. everybody's like, oh, okay. <laughs> As opposed to project Y that got budgeted at this but yeah now we need another quarter of a mil because right we 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 hit something here or whatever and even it's more so with as you said with the construction that we do because sometimes i don't really understand that at all because there's really not a whole lot of change going on there other than you know we we hit something here or whatever Mm -hmm. so it's just food for thought for the future uh it isn't going to affect four of us but um you know no, as, but, it's but, something we can definitely look at yeah, but i do it, agree it might help to, to, to drill in on that a little bit yeah i do agree uh, with that i mean there are multiple um procurement <clears throat> methods that we can use in this case i do you know we generally do do a bid for this type of work it usually works out fine minimal change orders in this case it was just unforeseen i mean we've had unforeseen on uh, multiple you know other projects and a lot of times it's during the excavation process right. where they do go in and see unforeseen circumstances. Mm-hmm. You know, we had that at Charles Carroll as well. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it's usually during that course of, right, of, the, right. of the phase of the construction that um, that happens, unfortunately. Um, in this case, the, like Ed said, the Borings were, uh, report was, you know, was completed and nothing came back, but right. you just don't know when you're going to hit that. No. But generally, we don't have issues like this uh, oftentimes i you know commissioner wance is absolutely right i 
talk about change orders. And oftentimes, and Mr. Ripper's going to come up here in a minute talking about a licensing or something about software. And I'm always asking, can we do it for three years or five years as opposed to one year? I'm always looking for that, you know, savings in that way. Um, these are common questions and that are being answered. Um, and I appreciate that uh, forward thinking by you and by the staff in, in you know, in doing this. Um, no, I thought this was a great discussion. I, I do appreciate it, Commissioner Wentz. Um, you know, getting us started on it because it is important. I'd poke you. What What's the end? What's the end date on this project? Are you getting close? So, or? so we're we're uh, so construction substantially completed out there. All that we have left to do is to uh, finish paving the part of the uh, road that's within our limit of disturbance, and we'll pretty much be uh, fin we'll we'll be well. That project will be wrapping up, and uh, once grass gets established, we'll close the grading permit and close it out. So. I, you know, I can't guarantee you that nothing's going to happen, but we're 99 percent completed, and I don't, I don't anticipate uh, that we're going to have anything else go go on. Okay. Okay. Good. So I got a motion. I had a second. I have discussion. Any further discussion? Yeah, I want to ask: Will there be any tree planting eventually around that? Will that be part of the package? Our, the trees are already in. Okay, good. It's going to be very lovely. Yep. Do they also, have white tubes they... around them. <laughs> Actually, these, these are Just large kidding. enough caliber trees oh. that the answer is no. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Now they to may a... have to put a change order in to put the tubes on the trees, but I no. think. <laughs> now shall not talk about white tubes. <laughs> okay, all in for a vote. All in favor of aye. this? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. That was painful. <laughs> white tubes. Okay. Mr. Ripper, come on up. Let's talk about CIS Endpoint Security Services Renewal. Morning, Commissioners. Good morning. morning. This isn't a change order, is it? No, I have no change <laughs> orders this morning. Go ahead. Good morning. <clears throat> the Office of Procurement in cooperation with Technology Services requests your approval to award the CIS Endpoint Security Services to Center for Internet Security, incorporated in the amount of $90,000. This is within the approved budget and no additional funds should be necessary. Morning. The, this is the um, completion of the first year of this contract that we've had with them. Uh, we started this last year around this time. This is an extremely important part of our cybersecurity measures. Um, after the user, um, this is the next best thing. And what this software does is it looks at all of the devices that we have on our network on a constant basis to see if it looks like anything's coming through that shouldn't be coming through or any systems are communicating with the outside world in a weird way or that type of thing, so. And this does go to a SOC? It does? Yes, it goes to okay. a 24-7 20, a SOC and we get notification the second that we know there's a problem. We get a phone call, email. Yeah, um, all that. okay. Okay. I make the motion the Board of Commissioners award this, the CIS Endpoint Security Services to Center for uh, Internet Security in the amount of $90,000. Second. Okay, I got a motion, I got a second. Any discussion seen here? None all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Laserfish Annual Support Renewal. The Office of Procurement and Cooperation with Technology Services requests your approval to award the renewal for Laserfish Annual Support Services to MCCI in the amount of $46,944.30. This purchase is, with, uh, is within the approved budget. No additional funds should be necessary. Um, this particular product commissioner is our primary document management system. It is electronic storage um, of all important documents. I'm not going to read through all the departments. You can see them listed there on the page um, that use this product. It does interface with quite a few other applications in the county um, and has been our um, primary support now, I think, for about a dozen years for document management. And we have to do this annually. We cannot bundle this into a long term. Actually, I'm glad you asked that, I'm glad that I question. I'm glad I It is now the policy of our department every time we renew one of these contracts to see if we can get an extended term that will provide a discounted cost. That's the big thing that the budget office sure. acts for. You know, a lot of places are willing to do a three-year contract, but they're not willing to discount right. the price to do a three-year contract. But that is now an active part of our policies. Fantastic. I really do appreciate that. Okay, I'll move the Board of Commissioners award the renewal of Laserfish annual support to MCCI in the amount of $46,944.30.
Second. I got a motion second. Any discussion? Seeing here none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Have a good Thank day. You. Purchase of the Liebert Heating and Cooling Unit. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. The Carroll County Bureau of Facilities solicited a quotation from Ward Boland, a single source vendor, to purchase one Liebert heating and cooling unit. We request your approval to purchase this unit from Ward Boland in the amount of $65,514. This purchase has budget approval and no additional funds should be necessary. Good morning, Commissioners. We're here to uh, approve and award Ward Boland the contract for facilities to purchase one Liebert unit for the IT data room here at the County Office Building. Uh, Liebert units are high efficiency units that are designed to, to uh, provide precision climate control to IT rooms, uh, humidification, dehumidification, heating, cooling, whatever that room needs. Uh, the current Liebert unit, unit is uh, roughly 28 years old and uh, it's at the end of life. And this is downstairs in the basement. And it's single sourced because? Uh, so Liebert is a manufacturer that has certain reps in certain areas that you got to go to those reps to buy those units right and ward bowling is the local rep where you got to go buy these units so if i would have went to a contractor they would have went to ward bowling to get this unit well i just cut out that middle purchase and i went right to ward bowling because we have an account with them and bought the unit in-house and probably save some money in the long Absolutely. run doing yeah. that yeah yes when you and that's where that single source comes yeah. into play yeah. Mr. Yep. McDonald, when you state high efficiency, does that mean that this unit will consume less electricity on our, on our It will. It will consume ele less electricity, uh, runtime, efficiency, um, all the above. And plus, with a IT room, you need to be concerned about static electricity. Mm -hmm. And this unit, when I say high efficiency, is also higher than those re regular AC units that don't control those, right. those variables that you have to maintain. So will long-term help save us money? That is correct. Thank you. Save money and save equipment. Right. Hmm. All right, I'll make the motion. We approve the purchase of one Liebert heating and cooling unit from Ward Bolin for 65514. Second. Okay, got a motion, I think maybe a couple of seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And just uh, an FYI, the units are 52 weeks out. <laughs> Yeah, well, at least it's not a year. So the one that's there now is 24 year old. It is, and there's a backup there. So we have two units down there for redundancy. Okay, so we're looking for a 25 year old, but we have something for redundancy. That's right. I lived my life of this stuff, so over the agency. So yeah, let's make sure. Yeah. Let's keep running. Okay, thanks. Uh. Let's talk about 2022 pipe culvert and storm drain. Oh, we got Let's one. Oh, we got one more. I apologize. Got to install it now. Oh. The lever. Jump on. Oh, Flip it. Okay, installation of the Liebert HVAC system for the IT department. Well, since it's 52 weeks out, we could probably wait. Yeah, I know. We just bought it. We don't have it installed. <laughs> got it. The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Bureau of Facilities, are requesting your approval to use the term contract or advanced heating and cooling for the installation of the Liebert HVAC system for the ID department at the county office building at a cost of $29,070. This amount is, at the adopt is within the adopted budget. No additional funds is should be necessary. So, yeah, commissioners, we're uh, looking for the approval to award advanced heating and cooling, uh, the installation portion of this job uh, for the Liebert HVAC system for the IT room. Uh, Vance Heating and Cooling will be replacing all refrigerant piping from the basement to the roof and any associated duct work that's involved with this transfer. Um, this is going to be a turnkey project, electric, duct work, refrigeration piping, everything that's included in this price is a turnkey. It's going to run once they get the project completed. Um, Vance will perform the factory startup to ensure we have that Liebert warranty, factory warranty which is one year in parts and five years on the compressor. So once we get the unit in, uh, they will come in on the backside and do the installation for us. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'll make the motion we award the contract for installation of the HVAC system for the ID department here at the office building in an amount of $29,070. Second. Got a motion, got a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay. Thank, thank you. Mr. McGowan, before you, much if relief. I may, before you leave, I want to thank you for the last four years. You have taken me in the mechanical rooms, in the basements. You have taken me on the roofs to see the mechanical systems. You have given me a thorough, in-depth understanding of all that takes place to maintain our buildings. And I'm very, very grateful that you did that for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's talk about the 2022 pipe culvert and storm drain rehabilitation. The Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Bureau of Engineering requests your approval to award the contract for the 2022 pipe culvert and storm drain rehabilitation to Pleasant's construction in the amount of $578,120.24. The Office of Procurement solicited bids for the project received three which are listed below. Pleasant construction was the lowest responsive and responsible bidder meeting all the terms and conditions advertised in the solicitation. This amount is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. This project includes placing approximately 2,655 linear feet of cured in place pipe and pipe culverts and storm drain segments ranging from the 15 inches to 48 inches in diameter. There are 49 locations on 17 different roadways. These are the roadways that are part of our current pavement rehabilitation contract. This type of work uh, will extend the life of the pipe another 30 to 40 years. There are some studies that say it will last as long as 50 years. We're just on the 50-year mark of, of this product being in place, so we'll see if it meets that 50-year mark. The estimated cost to replace all these joints, these pipes and, and the joints and everything else, is over a million dollars. So if we were to excavate all these, it would cost over a million dollars. So we estimate the savings to be about $470,000. In addition, a lot of these pipes and, and culverts are in yards and neighborhoods, and it would, it would be a lot of impact to those re residential properties if we were to have to replace them. So we've used this contractor uh, before for the same type of work in FY21, and uh, according to their website, they've installed over 1.2 million feet of cured-in-place pipe in the U.S. A lot of work. I make the motion of the Board of Commissioners award a contract for the 2022 pipe culvert and storm drain rehabilitation to Pleasant's construction in the amount of $578,120.24. I will second and also Mr. Lenoch and I'll extend my gratitude to you just as I did Mr. McDonald. You've taken me out, let me meet the road crews for the storm drains, the bridge inspections. That was all very vital in my four years of service. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, I got a motion second. Any discussion? Senior, uh, I apologize. Do you have? There's 11 locations on Mayberry Road. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. There are 11 pipes that we're going to be lining on Mayberry Road. Okay, that's that just kind of jumped out at me. I'm like, good grief. We have a lot of trying to get water from one side of the road to another in a lot of locations. They put it in the right place so we can, you know, get it to where it belongs. Right. And I would I would assume that's Mayberry from 140 all the way over to 97. Does that include East Mayberry or it, there's it's just not the entire section? Okay, we did the just, um, yeah. the 97 side under a previous. Oh, contract. did you? Okay, okay. There's a lot of water on Mayberry Road, so I guess it makes sense. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now let's try and get you some help with the traffic engineer. Hmm. The Office of Procurement and Cooperation with the Bureau of Engineering requests your approval to award a contract to Wallace Montgomery for traffic engineering services in the amount not to exceed $78,000. Wallace Montgomery is one of our term contractors, which was competitively bid through the procurement process. This amount is within the adopted budget. No additional funds will be necessary. So we're here today to seek your concurrence to continue to utilize the term contract to provide on-site consultant traffic engineering services for up to three days per week for a maximum of six, mo six months. The traffic engineering position became vacant in March of 2020. Since November of 21, we've had a consultant three days per week assisting uh, with us and the workload. Uh, while this is not our preference, 
Um, we have not been successful in hiring anyone to fill this position. So what is your preference? To fill the position for five days a week as a full-time county employee. And what do we pay for that position? Um, that is a C-13. The range is 64376 to 115877 Do we have anyone, is anyone interested in, you know, there's interest in this position? We've had a few positions. We had somebody here for a few months, yeah. and then they left to go to another county. Um, we've had two other interviews. We made an offer. Um, we, were, we thought we were in the ballpark, and when the offer was made, we weren't even close to their needs. Yeah. Um, and we have not had anybody recently um, apply. Recently, the des job description was changed um, so that the salary will be commensurate with the experience. Um, we are competing in a tight field right now. Um, other jurisdictions around us, um, Frederick, Baltimore, Hartford, and Howard all have positions similar to this that um, are advertised. And in the private sector, um, there it's, it's difficult um, they're hiring seniors now that are still in college mm -hmm. to start this field. They're, they're putting them on the payroll while they're still in college. They're summer interns that are usually juniors. They all have jobs. They're now looking at sophomores for interns. Yeah. It's a tight market right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's actually where my mind was going was the seniors getting them into internship roles and then recruiting right out of college. But you're saying that's already being thought through with other jurisdictions and the private community in the same positions, so. Yeah, the private sector yeah. folks I've talked to, um, and they're bringing in those those seniors yeah. at a rate which the third and fourth year folks in their firms right now right. are being paid, so they're having to move them up through. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a real tight market right now. Yep. Wow. Doug, did you want to share? Uh, right. Yes, sir. Thank you. I just wanted to mention that uh, in line with what Chris is saying, we have uh, had some initial meetings with our new human resources uh, director, uh, Director Bixler, and we are uh, trying to strategically target uh, this one as well as our county surveyor position, which has been vacant a lot longer. And we also uh, contract out to a local surveying company for those. So we are uh, starting again. We've continued to, to keep working on it. We are trying to get those filled. All good. Just take out the word new. She is no longer new. Yeah, one she month. Our so. HR. So, okay. Um, okay. Well, it's a necessary position to be filled. So. I make the motion the Board of Commissioners authorize the Department of Public Works to utilize the term contract with Wallace Montgomery for the contractual traffic engineer in the amount not to exceed $78,000. Second. I got a motion. I got a second. Is it to utilize or use the term kind of regardless? Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Just saying. Did you say regardless or irregardless? I said irregardless. <laughs> I didn't catch it. Irregardless to utilize. Okay. <laughs> Don't start that again. Thank you. <laughs> did we do that in here? We did. The oh. work okay. Planned. Change building, <laughs> remodeling. That's right. We we're sitting over there. Is this a change, change order? building remodeling of two <laughs> staff restrooms let's talk about two staff restrooms commissioners we're here today to request your approval to award the remodeling of two staff restrooms to lines construction a current term contractor in the amount of seventy four thousand eight hundred and four dollars a request for quote was solicited from two contractors with lines construction being the only respondent to submit a quote the work will be performed under the term contract that was previously awarded through the procurement process. This amount is within the adopted budget. No additional funds will be necessary. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Thank you for your time today. Uh, <laughs> Bureau of Building Construction is before you this morning to request the award of a contract to Lyons Construction to remodel two restrooms at the Change Building, which is located on Stoner Avenue. Joining me this morning is Eric Burdine, Deputy Director, DPW, and Dave Valentine, our Project Manager for this project. Dave's here to address any questions you may have for this project. And again, thank you for your time. And Dave, if you have any thoughts you'd like to say. 
Good morning, Commissioners. I'll just give you a brief description of the project and the overall condition of the restrooms as they stand right now. The restrooms, the current restrooms are in poor order with damaged stalls, broken fixtures, wall and flooring tile that is in poor condition, and the facility is currently not up to code. During this renovation, we'll be conducting a gut renovate, removing everything currently in place and replacing with new partitions, floor and wall, floor and wall towel, LED lighting fi fixtures, fixtures, hands-free faucets, and flush ometers, along with new mirrors and trash receptacles. This will bring the current <coughs> restrooms up to the current ADA code and county plumbing code and make a clean and modern facility for citizen services staff and clients to use. This project is within the approved budget. No extra funds will be needed. We have worked with Lions Construction before with good results and anticipate no issues. Commissioners, do you have any questions regarding <laughs> this project? Have we prioritized the bathrooms in county facilities to either stay status quo and or upgrade? Um, or is this a good idea to do? Because, you know, piecemealing projects, you know, in different facilities, it'd be kind of like the road <coughs> projects. We know which roads we're going after in priority order. Um, I don't know. I mean, it may be something no of no value or it may be something of value i i don't know uh for expectations um you know just so again the community understands here's a prior i apologize just here's the priority of efforts because we're using dollars you know that are not ours that's the communities and making it more suitable for staff to then take care of the community but you know kind of going through that path so i apologize eric do you have comments uh, yes commissioner so this is part of um the renovation to the project or to the to that building over there for citizen service to move in um and during that process we do have to bring this rest these restrooms up to ada compliance so this is the old um change, uh, building. change building change building okay yeah it was just purchased okay right. okay so yeah. you're looking at me with confusion i just yeah. didn't catch that but i got it no just it's the, it's the old new building. It's the old new building. Right. right. It's an oxymoron. That, <laughs> call me uh, a moron. To you, to your, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> this project aside, to your bigger question about prioritizing bathrooms or, or whatever, right. I just want, want you to understand that every year there's a process we go through between facilities and building construction and budget <clears throat> to say what are all the things out there that need to get done? What are the things out there that we would like to get done? How much money do we have available for doing it? So the end result of that is a prioritization, not bathroom by bathroom, but bathroom against this, against you know whatever projects. And you know the the reality of, of what we have to deal with is we're we're generally trying to figure out what is the most urgent problem that we have, what's going to be the biggest fix that we can make within the budget. I appreciate that, and that is a very clear message. That needs to be understood because the budget is not done behind closed doors it is very open and discussed and then it gives us the opportunity as commissioners to have the discussion about exactly what you just said but this attitude that it's done you know in in secret is counter to what you just shared so i i do appreciate that um and it's important so hey is there only two bathrooms in there dave there's two bathrooms currently. The building's going to be split into multiple uses. Right. Half the building's going to be used for citizen services, and the other half will then be turned into the family shelter right. area. So the other bathrooms will go into the scope of work for the remodel of the family shelter. Okay, that's where I was going with my question, if you do them all at the same time, but maybe not yeah, in this instance. It, okay. That'll be in a totally different project. Okay. Currently, in this project, I've renovated all the offices painted everything, installed new closets, IT closet, the flooring has all been redone. Um, and then we're gonna look to where the pool area is. 
to fill the pool in and Aww. make a... <laughs> Come on, man. Talk about fun. Come I don't on. I think anybody would like to swim in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cement pond. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> and turn that area into a conference area and a training room wow. for staff and county staff to be able to have another venue to go to, to have a training area, a conference room. So all this is kind of coming together at one time to get citizen star- services staff moved into their area so they can start utilizing it. Yeah. When is, uh, when, when is it going to be open? Right now, we can have them move in as soon as the, probably, I would say, the end of December. Really? Okay, that's so sure office nice. furniture's already in place. Wow. Um, we just had IT in there to yeah. put the new fiber in. So it's moving along pretty quick, and that was just one of the problems with this project yeah. is trying to get contractors to agree to the deadline that we're trying to keep to get this project moving so that we can get the staff in their offices. That's great. Great work. Yeah. So Great location, and yeah. Good, good work on your part. Nicely done. Are we using the most water water efficient um, fixtures? In, in cause yes, this will all be that's very important. Energy efficient. <laughs> I mean, you'll have <laughs> sensor faucets, flushometers will be censored, and they'll all be. I wouldn't call it low flow because in any building that has cast iron pipe that has any age, you really have to be careful to the amount of water that you cut back because it just leads to other problems. So you kind of go middle of the road to make sure there's no problems down the road for facilities with pipes being clogged due to not enough pressure to flush the pipe out. I think you learn something new every day. (laughs) Mr. Valentine, thanks for being in here today. And you look quite uh, appropriate in a tie and shirt, a dress shirt I've never seen that way before. And I know that your crews have a lot of respect for you. You do a wonderful job on the front end. I appreciate everything you do. And I like seeing that this is going to be ADA compliant. And most of all, the energy efficiency, ultimately, that impacts us all and the costs we have in our utilities. So thanks for all you do. Thank you, Commissioner. Make a motion after saying that. All right. Well, I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the award for the remodeling of two staff restrooms at Change Building to Lions Construction Company in the amount of $74,804. Second. Got a motion second. Any further discussion on this? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks Thank for the you, discussion. Commissioners. Commissioners. Absolutely. Installation of residential water meter vaults on Beesman Road. Hawkins Always a highlight. Always a highlight. Hawkins Street, Obreck <laughs> Road, and Caracara Court. Good morning, gentlemen. A lot of Aldersburg. The Office of Procurement Cooperation Bureau of Utilities requests your approval to award a contract for the installation of water meter vaults on Beesman Road, Hawkins Street, Obreck Road, and Caraca Court within the Freedom District Service Area to HTI contractors in the amount of $55,700. This award is being made via competitively bid term contract. Bids were solicited from four contractors and proposals were received from two of these contractors. The the proposals are summarized below. The bid amount is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. Good morning once again, gentlemen. Um, This is the latest project regarding the countywide system-wide upgrade from indoor water meters to the current standard outdoor vaults and water meters. It's not one of our most exciting projects, but it's very essential. (laughs) This does focus on 33 uh, uh, residential properties on Beesman Road, Hawkins Street, Obreck Road, and whoever named this court with this name should be drawn a court. I believe it's pronounced Kara Kara, but I'm not really sure. They're, they're, they're all located in the western portion of the Freedom Service area. Uh, for, back, for background, and including when I, when I appeared before you two weeks ago for a similar project, uh, 7,572 of the 8,230 Freedom District residential accounts will have either been upgraded or scheduled for, for transition to outdoor vaults and meters with this project. Oh, I'm sorry, what, what, prior to this project. With this project, the completed total will increase to 7,605 and will leave a balance of 625 units. Many of those are townhouse uh, developments, which are more, more tricky than, than single family mm-hmm. home uh, communities. So they, they, they will take approximately three more fiscal years to fully complete. 
Um, the average unit cost of, of this project of $1,688 is consistent with our, our <laughs> other recent water meter vault projects. And as you are aware, with, with, with many previous uh, uh, um, open, open agenda items, we have a very good work history with this contractor, HTI. And as you can see by the bids, the um, HTI and Mid-Atlantic were very close to uh, one another, and, uh, and we're, we're pleased to see that. <clears throat> Any questions for me? Yeah, just one. Is this part of the Enterprise Fund? It is. For water? Mm -hmm. Is this where that gets yeah. money so comes from on this? Okay. Okay, I'll move the Board of Commissioners award a contract for the installation of water meter vaults on Beesman Road, Hawkins Street, Obrecht Road, Caracara Court, within the Freedom District Service area to HTI contractors in an amount of $55,700. Second. That motion got a second. Any discussion on this? Great work. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Mr. Zaleski, would you like to come up and talk about the first quarter FY23 budget update and fourth quarter FY22 results? And Ms. Deb. Looks yes. all excited to do this. Okay. So as, as you said, we are going to talk a little bit about the current fiscal year and a little bit about the last fiscal year. Uh, start with the current fiscal year, looking forward where we're going to be heading from here or where we think we might be heading. Uh, right now, we look at the year end for fiscal year 23, and we're projecting that we would have a surplus of about $13 million. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but keep in mind that it is only November. Uh, the revenue picture is still out there to unfold. We don't know what kind of snow year we'll have. so. Don't fall in love with this number. It's just what we've got right now. <laughs> oh, come on uh, now. Of that 13 million, you remember every year we plan to carry forward to another year 1% of the budget. That's be about four and a half million dollars. So we think that'll leave us about eight and a half million dollars. On the revenue side, uh, we don't expect anything really interesting to happen in property tax. Uh, income tax uh, remains the most interesting thing we have to look at. We have not gotten a, a major distribution yet. Uh, some of the little pieces we've gotten so far were about $300,000 below what we, we budgeted. Um, don't take any message from that yet. It's just it's not enough to draw any conclusions. Recordation is also an interesting story. Uh, right now, uh, we anticipate being a couple million dollars in excess of budget, but this is a this is a changing picture. Now you might remember the last couple years, uh, we've had a very very hot housing market, which has driven recordation. Uh, when COVID hit, we fully expected that the housing market was going to slow dramatically, and we budgeted that way. Of course, that didn't happen. So in 21 we had a big year, in 22 we had a big year. Right now, we're still probably going to have an unusually strong year in recordation. But this is changing. Uh, the, the, how much revenue you get is driven by how many recordation transactions you have and how big are those transactions. How big those transactions are uh, is, is still strong and maybe even still growing. The number of transactions is starting to slow. Uh, no surprise, we knew this had to happen sometime. The only question for 23 now is just how quickly will this change? Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not beyond my thinking that the second half of the year, we might see a very significant slowdown, uh, both because a lot of people have already bought houses, and second, the interest rate, may bar, interest rate market is changing. Uh, that's going to change some decision making out there. Mm -hmm. So we look at everything we know right now about uh, revenue projections. Again, we don't know a whole lot yet, but we figure maybe $2 million more than budget at the end of the year. On the unexpended side, uh, we're figuring about $11 million. Uh, that is largely driven by open positions. Another thing that's changing, though, with the recent compensation changes and some of the code changes, we have had some growing success getting positions filled. Not everywhere. Uh, there are still places where we're struggling, but there, there's 
definitely been progress. How will that translate into open positions and the savings that goes along with that? We'll have to watch that play out. The other big piece of this is the fire EMS transition. Uh, what we budgeted for uh, is not happening on the same timetable. So there's going to be savings in fiscal year 23. Looking ahead, that's no savings because all we're doing is, is shifting when we'll start to spend the money. But this year, there'll be some savings. Uh, How much savings? We have $1.5 million in our projections right now. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so at the end of fiscal year 22, we had unassigned fund balance or what people commonly think of as surplus of about $34.5 million. Uh, we're figuring about $8.5 million at the end of 23, which would put us with about $43 million. Uh, we've talked about this at other times, but a good time to remind the world that's listening here. This is an unusual situation for us. Uh, this is not the kind of number we're usually talking about. Fiscal years 21 and 22 were uh, not typical of how things work, and I do not believe are a good indicator of how things will work in, in the future. But when we go into the fiscal year 24 budget, we will be going in with a, a strong position on um, our reserves. Fiscal year 22, looking back to the year that's ended. And uh, this is going to be a pretty short, high-level look. The comptroller will be coming in in the near future to go through the, all the financial statements where you'll touch more deeply on some of these things. But on, on the revenue side, uh, it came in about $36 million over budget. The, the reason is basically the same things I just talked about, income tax and <clears throat> recordation tax. And uh, two things happened there. With both, we budgeted carefully, not expecting what happened to happen. So our starting point was lower. So some of the surplus is because of where we chose to budget. And then some of the surplus is just because it was growth beyond what we expected. And in both cases, again, we, we don't believe we can count on that growth continuing. Um, Recordation, I don't think there's really a whole lot to talk about there except what is the timing and exactly how much it change. Income tax is still a bigger question and still a topic of conversation across the state and with the state, trying to figure out where this is headed. Um, as we've gone through these last couple years, we've added something like $15 million to the base. This is not about how fast are we growing, but just what's the line we're, we're growing on. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't jump into that. We, we approached that pretty slowly. But as we got more data, we saw what was happening. You know, it was hard to argue that this was not sustainable growth. Uh, that's already in there. This question that's still hanging out there now is how much more is there beyond this? Um, I can say I have lots of questions and concerns. Uh, I'm not unique, though. I've been talking with a lot of people who share the, all the same concerns that, that I do, uh, including at the state, where you know, they have a lot more data available than we do, and they've got people to work on that data that, that we, we don't. And they're, they're in the same place. You're wondering how much, can, how much can we reliably build into our projections. Our first big... Um, uh, distribution for income tax is at the end of November. So in a couple weeks, we'll get our, our first look. And as always, that one distribution is not enough to tell us where are we going, but it starts to give us something to think about some more. And then uh, recordation came in more than $8 million over budget. And part of that was because of where we budgeted. Part of that was just because of how strong that it was. On the expenditure side, what we didn't spend but was budgeted, uh, same kind of idea with fire. Things have not progressed as quickly as we budgeted to be able to go. Uh, we had a mild winter, we had about $900,000 left in the storm and emergencies budget. And, um, and then there's others, but it's spread, spread across the, the organization and the budgets. So 22 left us in a strong position. Uh, right now, 23, we look to, to build on that. 
And now we just uh, continue to watch and see what's happening. And in a, in a few months, we'll be d digging more deeply into what do the revenue projections look like. What was the um, income tax that came in? Didn't it come in um, in July or? I mean, it's coming in at the end of November, well, the last income tax. What? Okay, the big distributions are at the end of November, right. the end of March. February. Uh, end of February, the end of May. May. And then the last big distribution comes in three pieces. Yeah. They get some of it in June, some of it in July, and some of it in August. So combining that June, July, August, what was that? I mean, are there any trends right now that we can see or are we waiting for the end of November to really give us a, a feel walking into uh, FY24? We never get to a place where we say, okay, that's the information we needed. <laughs> this, this is just yeah. constantly evolving. Yeah. And the idea of trying to identify a trend with income tax is, yeah. is just inherently dangerous because yeah. we, there, there aren't trends. Um, sometimes you, know, you look at what just happened in the last three distributions and you say, right. okay, I know where we're going. Right. And then the next distribution not only doesn't go there, but right. it goes in a different direction. And I mean, we've, we've experienced this for, for, for yeah. years. You know, it's just, uh, it's just the way it is. That's fair. I mean, um, okay. Like reading the tea leaves. Uh, tea leaves are easier. They're just <laughs> sitting there. Uh, you can read those. <laughs> the, um, that, yeah. That's the, yeah, that's the consistent message since I've been here for yeah. eight years and two other of my colleagues have been here for eight years mm -hmm. too, which has always been good mm -hmm. as we look to move into the next budget. Now, obviously, we're not in that same place. Uh, but those numbers, even through the pandemic that we're coming out of, which was puzzling and challenging and whatever word you want to throw at it um, to, for us to be where we are uh, I think says a lot about that consistent messaging uh, that you mm -hmm. provided to us and you know I'm I don't want to speak for everybody but I'm proud to have worked on eight budgets and voted in favor of all eight knowing and working with that consistent messaging uh, that you have always provided uh, which always led me uh, to being, you know, confident mm -hmm. as we move forward. There were some years we sat here and, oh boy, where are we going? But um, look, that that message was always here, and um, I think we're we're in a we're in a much better place as a result of that. And you know, I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but I, mm -hmm. you know, I maybe it's time because there's only 24 days left but um who's counting clarity who's counting how many but, but <laughs> eight 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 very challenging budgets over the last mm -hmm. years and um again for me yeah. uh there were times that that i didn't know where we, we were going but i always had that message uh and appreciate what staff has done <clears throat> and always at the end of the day in may when we signed on the dotted line knew that that vote for our budget was the best place that we could be so and that's with fire and i mean we added a brand new department uh that's that's gonna grow and you know so uh, anyway i'll i'll get off of that but it's just it's a proud moment for me to hear these numbers and to hear you with that consistency and i hope uh the um i, I use the word hope and i don't know you don't like that ed but um but i hope that the the other four colleagues coming in will take that message as strongly and bank it as strongly, no pun intended, mm. bank it as strongly as what I did so that we were able to do that. And the, the most challenging part of this job, and it was, it was very vocal to me when I came in here, is the budget and uh, all things associated with it because that's what makes the engine run here. So. I don't know. Kudos to you, Ted. You've been along for the ride the whole time. So have you, Deb. And it's been it's been a it's been quite the challenging ride. Uh, so I appreciate all that. Thank and you. this is a very positive mm -hmm. look at what lies ahead. And that's that's I that's good. Yeah, you mentioned the pandemic, which reminds me, 
you know, as we're trying to figure out what's happening. Right. And you know, one of the big questions that's still lingering is, uh, I think we can say very confidently that part of the re a big part of the reason why 21 and 22 played out the way it did was right. because of the federal stimulus. We're past the federal stimulus now, but we don't yet know exactly what's the transition from where we were to where we're going. And the other really big question mark is on um, income, unearned income, and also income that's not about withholdings, where we can, we can see the money coming out of the paychecks. Because we know, you know the, the a large part of the increase we've experienced was an in, unearned income. that You can't count on that. And in fact, you can count on that you can't count on it. But exactly what impact will that have? Right. That's what we don't know. You know, there's, um, comes to mind, and, and I appreciate your comments, because again, maybe not in this chair, but I've been doing this a long time, dealing with these type of budgets, some that we're in more control of than others. And there's three C's, you know, um, consistency, confidence, and clarity. And appreciate the consistent messages that you provide um, because you're not the engineer of the train. That's us. You're facilitating the discussion to allow us to steer um, and figure out the gas pedals, you know, going faster or slower. You know, don't think trains have gas pedals, but whatever. What um, kind of trains do you drive? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Don't you push or whatever? Anyway, but <laughs> you're Mixed not. Mixed metaphors. <laughs> yeah. But, 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 you know, this, this attitude that you're, you know, you're the driver is, as Commissioner Wentz would say, absurd because you're not that's us and we don't take that lightly we don't um you know distribute it we don't um delegate it but you and your team have facilitated um the consistency so that's important the confidence is also very important and it's not blind confidence you know it's not confidence that discussions were made in back rooms and here it is and just say okay because it's on the sheets but it's getting into the details um so that's been important and then the third which is the most is the clarity and that's at the end of the day you know on 31 may i think there's 31 days in may mm -hmm. okay 31 that is our responsibility to have that clear message of this is the next year's budget out outward thinking um clarity is so important and that's why we are a triple triple a because of confidence consistency and clarity i mean there's no doubt in my mind um and it's yeah these are great numbers <laughs> you know walking you know that you provided we have a long ways to go because fire ems is a massive <sighs> muscle moving you know in, in the county that we've taken on and uh It'll be very interesting having that discussion um, come early, late winter, early spring about how that's going to happen because um, we we got we got to continue to get further clarity and you know the lieutenants uh, are going to be hired soon hopefully and uh, you know we'll see where we're going as far as uh, the employment but we still have a long ways to go. And I think that, I mean, wouldn't you agree that's the largest muscle movement, you know, in the county right now yep. that we're taking on? Fire EMS. Probably should call it EMS and fire, yeah. but, well, you know. Yeah. Okay. On that same boat, but, yeah, that's, yeah. that's huge. I, I just love hearing that message. Carroll County is good financially, and that's due to your watching it, Deb, Taylor, and the rest of the crew just keeping an eye on what – uh, on the conduct on the uh, engineer here of the train you have uh, but uh, it works very well and I, I um, you know Ted's over the years sometimes you guys can drive me crazy uh, on this budget thing but it's a short drive it's short drive but you, you've done a great job of tempering that and uh, and it keeps us it keeps us focused and we are in good shape in Carroll County and the message has to get out that yeah, Carroll County is strong financially compared to a lot of others, and I think our AAA bond rating and everything else really shows that. So, thank you. I want to add to the praise and reiterate what my colleague said. 
thanks for recognizing the parallel between the interest rates and recordation fees. A lot of people don't pay attention to it, but thank goodness you're out there on the front line. And I want to thank you, Director Zosky. Over the last four years, so much of my success as county commissioner has been directly related to your wise counsel and advice on these fiscal budgetary issues. You don't say a whole lot, but when you say stuff, I'm hanging on the edge listening to your every word. And I strongly advise the next commissioners come in, pay close attention to what your office does. You provide very wise counsel. Thank you very much. In spite of the fact you have a Steelers lane year one. <laughs> okay. Any other conversation? Really good update. Um, good numbers. <laughs> I mean, can't, can't take away that. These are good numbers to, to walk away from uh, this morning. So anything else? Deb? Mom in the back? Anything? Everything good with James? So well. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more item. We do? Yep. Item 14 is page. County Administrator, wait. Oh, man. Hold on. Position request. Is that the item? Yep. It is. Position request for OMB. No? Or is it the County Administrator's? Oh, I apologize. Uh, for Deputy County Administrator. Now you're on. Okay. And I, I probably wouldn't even really characterize this quite as a position request. Uh, we have talked about this previously, and you might remember this goes back to when we first started facing COVID and started examining the organization to say, what do we do if, if things go, go bad? That led us down many roads. Um, We've, we've taken on some stuff already. We made some significant code changes, made some significant compensation changes. You've heard about next steps, looking at job descriptions, job classifications, career ladders. That's all the big, easy to say, here's this thing. But there's a lot of other stuff going on as well. And a lot of it falls under an idea of organization change. You know, as we looked at things, we started saying, we have an opportunity here to change this, to make this better, to find a different path, to recognize that what once worked isn't gonna work for us any, anymore. None of that is easy. There's, there's a, a lot that goes into trying to make that. And you know, organizations don't change easily. Everybody's not gonna jump up and say, okay, give us the list and we'll go make this happen. You know, it, it takes pulling, it takes pushing, it takes getting people to, to get on board with what you're trying to do. I believe, and I think others believe, that now that we've identified some of these opportunities, we can't simply turn our head away and say, okay, well, we saw that, but we're not gonna look at anymore. I, I believe we have to act on these things. And again, I believe, and I believe others are with me on this, that organization change is not just gonna happen, it has to be led. And the reality of Roberta's job is her day is mostly taken up with just dealing with the day and if we need if we want to make this happen there needs to be some more help now exactly how this will be structured what roberta will do what roberta will give to the deputy that's all still ahead of us to fit to figure out the first step though is making the position available i said some months ago we talked about this uh, I believe you, you all were ag agreeing conceptually that we needed to do this. And uh, I made a mistake. You know, we went through a budget process. <clears throat> I should have had this built into the budget for you to specifically approve at that time. And, and I don't know why now, but it, it didn't happen. Uh, so I'm here now saying, I believe it was our intent. I believe it's necessary. I wanna see this happen now and I'd like to get your approval to go ahead and create this position so we can get Roberto on the path to figuring out how are we gonna make this happen. I agree that you should have had this done last budget season. So you are coming to us out of cycle and which does concern me. Um, but with that said, once you make the sale, you should stop selling, okay? And the sale was made a long time ago um, as we started gathering the information. Um, and understanding the need to do exactly what you're doing. Um, as you know, I love analogies. <laughs> Largest nonprofit, 
you know, in the county is county government. We're likened to a uh, aircraft carrier. And an aircraft carrier doesn't move on the dime like this because if it does, it'll break and everybody will fall off the other side. <coughs> a speedboat can do that. You gotta keep continue to move it. And to have that consistent movement, I do agree that we need uh, the chief administrator to have someone um, at you know her side to continue to create that change that's coming our way and um, so I'm all in favor of this and uh, I know there may be discussion on this but I'm going to move that the Board of Commissioners approve the position of Deputy County Administrator I will second it I also want to state that Ted you juggled a lot to pull this off so it's understandable if this slipped through I also want to state that I know the administrator has tremendous organizational skills and I know she comes in every day having everything mapped out but stuff comes at you fast you get the calls you get the email and all the things you try to coordinate and organize ahead of time start falling through like little things like this it's just human nature it happens and this is going to be a tremendous addition to our administration I've been a very very strong advocate of this and I'm so honored that this being is being put through before we leave office and this is this is going to be a tremendous help to you where does Siegel fall into this uh, on their recommendations well this was in their recommendations but I, I really don't want to make that the, the, the focus um, you know we we use them to help us work through some things but we're now moving on with what with what we need to do to make these changes well I, I just you know I'm not opposed to it I just wanted to know where yeah. you know, we paid for the study and how this <clears throat> came together from their view and this was one of their initial findings was strengthen IT strengthen uh, the administrator mm -hmm. and strengthen um, HR were I three of the briefly quick remember reminder you know but we still have a ways to go with the the Siegel study um, I know. you know outcomes and and that's fine but uh, that was one of their initial, you know, immediate findings that I recall. This is nothing new. So, uh, we've been talking about this now for five, six years, I guess, and it never really got a whole lot of legs, <coughs> and it was hinted at, and then just sort of, I guess, lost in the challenge about you know the, all those budget things that we discussed because we weren't sure where it was coming from or what we were going to do, but. Um, it's interesting how things change and I'll, how mindsets change. I'll just leave it at that because then some comments made it. I'm sitting over here going, what? Yeah. Anyway, um, I think this is incredibly long overdue. Re and it, it doesn't matter who's in the position. Uh, let's remove the person from the position. Uh, whoever is in that Correct. county administrator position, uh, no doubt, needs assistance other than an administrative assistant in order to run this size government period all the hugging and the love that everybody wants to show it doesn't matter it's about the operation of this government and how it's most efficient moving forward so I'm removing the names uh, I think it's important to have that structure I just hope Christy that it's structured correctly and I hope that it's paid correct compensated correctly because um, that's very important too there's been talking about that for eight years since I've been here too uh, about the you know what what the levels of compensation are for those in upper management and we have repaired that to a certain extent I don't know that our repairs are complete yet we're, we're close but needs a little bit more I think so uh, for me, it comes down to a no-brainer here. There, it, this size needs assistance mm -hmm. in order for that to, 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 to work correctly. Um, and how it's happened is, is wonderful. I wish it would have happened when it was, again, it was brought up about six years ago. I remember it very well. And Dick, you alluded to that. Dennis, you probably remember too. We talked about this. Um, and now all of a sudden it you know here we are so yeah long overdue uh, let's roll I, I will share and I do appreciate is one comment you did make 
Ted, that I do disagree with is um, not knowing the requirement yet, but getting the position in place. Requirements got to come before the position, and I think that can be established in, yes. you know, yeah. then putting the position. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you, you you made that comment, I was like, no, we we don't put somebody in place and then figure out what they're going to no, do. That, that was not my. I'm, I'm not just. I I got you. I I don't think that's what you meant to say, but that's the way I heard it, and I just want to be clear that we're putting a requirement, establishing the requirement, and then putting a position, correct? Right, I was right. just saying I'm not in a position at this moment to right. tell you, yeah, but yes, clearly we will have Got to it. make those decisions okay. before we try and decide who's the right person to hire Co for it. Correct, okay, I just, again, when I hear things, I'm like, get a position, then figure out the requirements, because you're, that's opposite, okay. No, this back to that clarity thing. <laughs> it, it, it does, but it, exactly. I'm telling you, it's it's important when I when I'm hearing things like that, and yeah. I know the thousands are listening, right? At That's, least, yeah. at least that they're going to say, "What we're putting, we're we're making government fat, and they don't really have another job." That's not true. Yeah, we are, you know, very lean by the positions that we let go many years ago. You know, and we need to build ourselves in a place where we can serve our community the best way we can. And in doing that, this position is critical. So, okay. Yeah. But that that's an important it's message about clarity. And we, back to one last thing. Three of us have been through the hiring process of county administrator. Mm. And to say it ain't easy is an understatement because it wasn't it was a it, it was an interesting process that that and i'm going to use the word it got a little wonky there for a while um so that's why i made the comment about let's make sure we've got the right duties assigned the right compensation right. assigned to those right. duties uh and i say that based on the experience that the three of us had mm -hmm. when we went through this before that was interesting. Yeah. Wonky. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? Seen here none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have any more items you want to talk <clears throat> about? Nope. Okay. He doesn't want to talk about the Steelers. By the way, Miss Bixler, your uh, presentation the other day from your staff was great. Oh, good. Thank you you. Uh, have made That's impact all. already. It's it's very impressive. Thank you for the feedback. And I did my homework as assigned. Good. Yeah, I, I got to finish. Deadline, so. I got to finish mine. So okay. yeah, just letting you know. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Thank you. Demerits oh. will be handed out. If it's okay. Out. Let's look at uh, closed meeting. To check that. Minutes. So I don't even have an office, and I read my email. From. I've never seen that. <laughs> smells like. November third, closed meeting minutes. Uh, Dealing with what? I oh, my glasses on. They were land acquisition. land acquisition. Land acquisition. Thank you so much. Oh, got it. Motion to approve those minutes. Second. <clears throat> okay, got a motion. I got a second. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Hmm. Uh, Wanda, why don't you come on up? I assume there's no public comment. Just to make, just to make sure. Do you want to ask Chris? This one want to come up first. No, Chris, <laughs> are there anybody on the phone? No one's on the line. Okay. Ms. Windham, are you uh, satisfied? I am. Okay. Now that Ms. Windham is satisfied, uh, let's start with November 14th at 3 p.m. Commissioner Fraser will be attending the <clears throat> Transit Advisory Council. On Tuesday, there'll be a legislative, a, a legislative breakfast, which will be held at Exploration Commons, and Commissioner Boucher and I will be attending. At 8:30, there's a local management board virtual meeting with Commissioner Fraser attending. At 9 a.m., Commissioner Wance will be attending the Planning Commission uh, board downstairs. <coughs> there's a there's another event. I'm going to be going over to uh, CCYSB 
right after the breakfast. If you can ask Vivian to put that on, because it has to do with, um, I think, their accreditation over there that they okay. asked for me to attend. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. um, at 2 p.m., the Veterans Advisory Meeting. Commissioner Weaver and I are attending. Is there one? I didn't know there was one. Okay. Uh, Wednesday, Commission on Aging and Disabilities. I'll be attending. It'll be virtual. The Carroll Community College Board of Trustees meeting over in the Great Hall over in Westminster to college. Commissioner Wentz will be attending at 5 p.m. And then after that, when he has a full belly, we'll be attending the ESAC, the Emergency Services Advisory Council, at 7 p.m. On Thursday, we have open session. Talking about the FY22 audit and annual comprehensive financial report. Looking forward to that uh, from Ms. Hobbs. Exercise an option to purchase the Christopher Sterner property through Rural Legacy Program. Purchase of portable and mobile radios plus accessories. Um, <laughs> so very few items right now, but that's okay because I'm going to be looking forward to attending the Fort Meade uh, Education Resiliency Center ribbon cutting and just share this has been a vision of mine for 11 years coming to fruition after a $5 million project. So it's pretty exciting to take care of our military and veteran community. Um, and Commissioner Boucher is going to be walking at Bennett Surf Park, a walk in the park. Then there's a Mer Maryland uh, manufacturing celebration over at Martin's West. Uh, that evening I'll be attending. Mike Galeazzo is retiring after three or four decades of selfless service to our state in, manu in the manufacturing community. Uh, just a, a great guy. Friday, uh, nothing scheduled on Saturday at 11 a.m. Commissioner Weaver will be uh, attending and providing, I think, a proclamation for a road sign dedication to Tech Sergeant Joseph A. Far Farenholt uh, over at the American Legion. And then 5 p.m., the Sober Truth and Chrysalis Transitional Living Black Light Spectacular Family Dinner over in uh, Tawny Town. Commissioner Frazier and Boucher will be attending. Commissioner I'll take my name off of that. Commissioner Frazier will not be attending. Um, but Commissioner Frazier does have the podcast for Sunday, November 20th. It, if I may add, on the 17th at the Walk in the Park, I just want to let people know that that is also going to be a food drive for Carroll County Food Sunday. So anyone wants to attend, please bring some non-perishable food items. That's my understanding. There'll be some pilgrims and a turkey there. Okay, on Monday, November 21st, there's the Governor's Emergency Management Advisory Council GMAC meeting that Commissioner Wentz will be attending. On Tuesday, we will be going into open session. Um, an update on the health of the county with Ms. Sue Doyle, our uh, county health officer. Um, and a discussion, excuse me, of the Employment Campus Solar Text Amendment. Uh, Department of Planning will be leading that. After that, we will have a discussion of the Industrial 1 and C3 text amendment. And then a request to go to public hearing for the Historic Preservation Committee. I can't, I can't imagine Commission. that's correct. Huh? I'm, I would be surprised that that's correct. I mean, it has to, it, you just, yeah. this, this board just sent it to the Planning Commission today. So I can't well, imagine the Planning Commission is going to do their work that quickly. I don't know if it's on, oh, it is on the agenda for yeah. uh, Tuesday. So it's on the agenda for Maybe. next week. Maybe they'll just yeah. go, yep, we're good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come Maybe. back up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Which I might I'd push a little bit because I would like to see that. Yeah. I don't even know we're not going to be part of the. I don't think there's it. anything confrontational on it. Yeah. So we won't and, be part of the right. decision, but at least we can see the right. public. Yeah, hearing. you may not be. Yeah. I, I, yeah, which is interesting too. Uh, as, I have know. positive thoughts that it's going to make it through. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Um, and then the Scott Holnicker retirement at 2 p.m. Uh, over at the Farm Museum. Commissioner Wance and Weaver will be attending.
put my name also on that, and yep. I'll try and get Add over mine there. As well. Wednesday, we have nothing. Add my name to that. I'll see if I can make so it. All that. five commissioners will work hard to get over there and say farewell to to Scott. Uh, the office uh, will be closed for uh, Thanksgiving observance of Thanksgiving on Thursday, along with Friday. Um, Commissioner Frazier on Friday morning will be attending the Carroll Festival of Trees if he wakes up in time after Thanksgiving on <laughs> Thursday. Is that um, 8 a.m.? People be in a food coma. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I remember that, but okay. Saturday, we have nothing scheduled. Commissioner Boucher has the podcast on November 27th. But he'll be shopping anyway. It's Black Friday. Yeah. He'll be up at do people oh. do that anymore? Do they get up at we'll 4 o'clock in the morning? Oh, and absolutely. On this? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I thought it was moved to okay. Light trees. Um, <laughs> Mr. Burke, do you have anything you want to talk I, about? I do not. Are you sure? No jokes. Okay. Oh, I let the, the bathroom agenda item, I let that one slide. No <laughs> jokes. So. You're slipping. <laughs> okay, uh, Ms. Wyndham, do you have anything? I don't know if you said it in the beginning because I was a couple minutes late. Kevin. You weren't listening to me anyway. Go ahead. No, I... Why bother? Um, the, the, um, wow. the county offices will be closed tomorrow. Did people, anybody say that? Oh, so for Veterans oh, no. Day. For Veterans Day. Yeah. A reminder, the county offices will be closed tomorrow for Veterans Day. And wishing everyone a very happy Veterans Day. And with those, thank me for wearing the uniform. I thank them back for giving me a reason. We live in a pretty cool place. Um, anything for open admin? I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I got a motion, guys. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now. <laughs> you get a stand.